G'day. What we're going to look at today is just making a basic skateboarding helmet or rollerblading, um, something for, you know, um, basic sport. Um, what we want to do to get started is to create and save a file. Um, just right now I've just called this skate file and you just want to save it because we're going to be importing our scaled head that we got from GrabCAD or wherever else and Fusion requires you to have a saved project. So if you just go file new, it won't let you import anything until you save it out. So what we're gonna do is just drag that in. It's gonna look like it's doing nothing, but that's just how Fusion goes. And it's gonna, of course, bring it in at a weird angle because why wouldn't it? It doesn't really matter. All we have to do is change it to 70 degrees or negative 90 and we should be good. So our front view is to the front all good. Um, what we can look at doing is making this um, unselectable because while we're modeling over it we don't need to interact with it we don't need to select anything on it we don't need to snap to it um, so we can just uncheck that and that way we can't accidentally select anything on this while we're modeling up stuff for the other elements and we just want to show our origin and make sure this is relatively in the middle and that looks like it's pretty good, it should be fine. So what we want to do to start getting a basic sort of helmet going is to go straight into the create form. And yeah, now this has gone slightly transparent, which is nice and helpful. Uh, you might even find that um, just basic shaded can help, but then it's going to be a bit of a problem when we put our quad ball in. I'll show that in a minute. Um, there are other settings you can go into to make one hide and one show, but that doesn't matter at the moment. So what we want to do is create a quad ball um, to make the base of our helmet. And we want to make sure we select quad ball and not sphere like we discussed in our game controller little introduction. Um, we like the way the quad ball is made up of um, squares. So uh, it doesn't really matter where we put it anyway. Let's just make sure we're on the right plane here. And scale it up because we're going to reposition it anyway. And we want to ensure we've got some sort of symmetry going on from the left and right. Um, so length symmetry, that's not what we're after. Not width symmetry either. It turns out we want height symmetry. Um, so with this green line across here, that means everything on this side is going to be copied across to that side. And that's going to be perfect. Um, so what we just want to do is select and edit our form and start positioning it in the right sort of way. So we can kind of go roughly over the head and then scale it up a bit. Um, that does look a bit odd, but that's just kind of part of it, how we're going to work with it. Um, we can double click it and go to opacity control. So if we go down to about 50, um, we can start to get a really good idea now of how we want to edit this to um, suit the skull a bit better. Um, so what we can do is just select points now using edit form. Um, body, we just want to make sure we've got all selected here on the right. And that's going to allow us to pick, well, anything, whether it be a point a face or a line or an edge. Um, now there are a couple ways you can go about this. Um, so generally what we find with like a, bike, a sports helmet is that the back flares out a little, um, you know, the front flares out a little but it cuts off around the forehead. Um, so there's, there's really two ways I would go about modeling this. Um, and what it comes down to is how we trim it. Um, so we could be looking at um, modeling up this whole thing as a sphere and cutting it up. And I'm just going to say that's fine. That may be a bit off, but that doesn't really matter. Um, nothing seems to be protruding out, so that's fine. Um, so obviously we need some sort of cutouts here to suit around the ear and the forehead. Um, and I'm going to show you two different ways we could do that. Uh, so what we can do right away is create a sketch on the right plane and essentially we want to 
cut a shape through here with a spline. Uh, so we can turn on visual style uh, shaded with hidden edges, or I think what'll work better is just going wireframe. So now we can, even though it looks terrifying, um, we can draw our shape on here. Uh, and there's a few things to think about when we're actually cutting into a sphere and I'll um, show you it because we get issues when it comes to projection. So um, how does a sphere work? We go something down here, it comes up around the ears. Generally you want it to like kind of cushion on the top of the ears but we'll just avoid it a little bit for now then it comes down. Uh, and then we'll flare off the back. So maybe we'll make this a bit tighter and then flare off the back here. And we'll say that's okay for now. Again, this is um, meant to be quite rough um, and not really a issue at this point in time, whether it's perfect or not. So we can click and drag some parts, just to kind of make it look well, better or worse. Depends on how you think of my amazing helmet so far. Um, Yes, yeah, something like that. We'll see how it looks. Um, the thing is with this, now, if we get this, and I'm just going to hide the head and go to a shaded view, we can use this to... Oops, sorry. Let's exit our sketch. We can use this to trim this surface. So if we select Trim, Trim Tool... Oh, sorry. It's not a surface, it's a solid. Um, we generally want to be working with the surface at this point. Like, you know, we can offset these faces and trim it up. But what I'm just going to do to make it a bit easier is delete these bottom ones. Uh, so that means it's going to bring it out as a surface. It's just easier to do this way, I think. So now when we select the trim tool, we can cut away this bottom section. And we start to get what kind of looks like the shape of a weird sort of helmet. Um, the problem is sometimes you don't get exactly what you want on the front or the back. Um, if your thing might not be perfectly tangent or if you want it to flatten out. Uh, this case, it, it doesn't really look bad. We want a little bit of that. Um, but a good um, sort of practice is to make sure wherever it exit out, it's coming at it at a sort of tangency. Um, so we can select these and make it horizontal or something like that um, or even just match it to the top there because sometimes you can get it dipping back down um, if it would let me adjust these arms so that you know you may or may not want that where it dips down in towards the front um, and it's just worth noting because some of these like it doesn't really look like it's doing it over here um, obviously because it's a 2D projection. Um, so it's important to keep in mind, if you want it to go flat, try and keep it um, as flat to the surface as possible. So when we do that, uh, it straightens out quite soon on there. But I'm going to say I'm pretty happy with the rough shape of this. It should probably be a bit flatter on the side and higher out on the top. So we can just go ahead and pull that out a bit more using our um, timeline, so we roll out there, bring that out a bit, and maybe even just grab these and roll it in a bit to straighten it out. Um, but that's fine for now. Again, I'm not too fast at the moment. Um, so we've got that. Let's say it's our basic shape. If we have a look on our head, yeah, we can say we're kind of happy with how that suits. Maybe this front needs to be brought in. Um, but this is mine. And yeah, like I said, we're just going through the processes here. So it doesn't have to be perfect. And then this way our tutorials don't go on forever. So once we've got that sorted, um, well, actually, you know what? I'll show you the other way of doing it. Um, so the other way we can do it is, and what I'm going to do to show you that, I will actually... Uh, copy and paste that body so we don't screw up our trimming. And what we can do is actually delete some of these faces and go about sculpting it. So this gives us a lot more control of it in 3D. Um, but then we start to get 
other problems that come about because of it. Um, so uh, let's roll forward on that, modify the form, and we can go about bringing things to where we want them. Rolling that forward. Um, and adding in extra lines and points as we require them. So we can pull the back up on its own, rotate it out, push it outwards a bit. Uh, the problem is sometimes you get a bit of, um, it might end up a bit wobbly down the bottom and you might not want that. Um, or, you know, you could delete this whole section completely and just bring that back in there. And if we're at the, oops, sorry about that. If we're at the rear view, we can select these and bring them down with Alt. Sorry, that's the wrong button. Bring that down with Alt. Um, you will notice sometimes when we do this, um, if it's mirrored, it's going to pull one side and not the other. Um, I'm just gonna hide that for a second. And you get this problem here. There's two ways around this. One, you could live with it and go modify world vertices. I don't know why my menu's glitching out like that. And then it's just a matter of joining these together. The other alternative is because it's mirrored, um, there's a few more uh, little controls we can use on that. So we see this highlighted in yellow. If we actually select that one as well, then when we pull it down, it's gonna bring both of it um, down together. So that's a way to get around that. It'll control both of them. And, you know, we can pull these around or whatever we do. Um, bring it forward, push the back out more. Um, and then we can actually go in and add in points to get more control of it. Um, so if we insert a point between here and here, that just essentially adds another line and it starts to break up the surface more. Um, but then, well, it's going to need one from here to here as well and more and more. That being said, you can, like, I prefer to use the trimming, um, but that's absolutely just my preference. You can go in and do it like this. It gives you a little more control of exactly how you want the surface. Um, however, it will take a bit more time. It can be more complicated. Um, and generally you want it, you know, a bit neater than all this. This has gone a bit odd. And we can look at it by using the box mapping and seeing that this is being pushed out really far. So it's really up to you, whichever way you go about it. Um, I'm just gonna cancel all that because I was pretty happy with how the other one came out. So I'm just gonna finish up the form. We've got this and now we wanna look at adding thickness to our helmet and adding the foam on the inside. So what we just wanna go and do is under create in surface. Uh, I don't know if it shows up down here. Yeah, okay, it does show up in solid modeling as well. We just wanna thicken this outwards by, I don't know, a couple mil, two or three. Let's go three, that looks fine to me. We'll do that. And then we want to create the inner foam. And to do that, all we have to do is offset this inner surface and then thicken it. We could have uh, gone and used this again, but just to avoid some little glitches we encounter with rendering when objects sit exactly on each other, um, I'm gonna go ahead and offset it. So surface create offset, and it's gonna, because I've got chain selection on, what that's gonna do is select every tangent surface. So at least we know this is really smooth and great um, because it's selected it as a tangency. And so we're just gonna go, pulling inwards has gone negative. So we're just gonna go negative 0.2. And so now we're sitting, adjust that around. It doesn't wanna zoom in. Uh, that's negative 0.2 uh, millimeters offset inwards. So essentially nothing and you know you can say that's where the adhesive goes if these things are bonded together um, then we just select that inner surface go create thicken and we want to beef that up inwards by about 15 mil so something like that um, however we do notice that thickening isn't quite even so looking at the side view, we actually get it protruding out quite a bit and we don't want that. 
it doesn't look clean it's not the way helmets are actually trimmed down so it's fine for the top body which is only a couple mil but something like this you start to see it noticeably deforming the surface and we want it to cut straight across so what we can do and i think this is another good reason why we've got um this uh this sketch spline already done um so we can use it to re-trim it and what i'm actually going to do is create another sketch on this plane and we want to include that so we select it and go create and project so we can project it to the current sketch which means we can interact with it properly go to offset select it and just go up you know it doesn't really matter at this point but i'm just going to go what's negative one and eh, maybe negative two we'll see how that looks and because we've set it up this way, we can always change it. And so we're going to finish our sketch. We've only got this body showing, which is good. We're going to just extrude. Nope, sorry, we're not gonna extrude. What we can do is just um, split the body. Body to split there, splitting tool. We wanna to select that sketch. And we can see that it's gonna cut right through it Okay, so what we can see here, now we've got, it's created two bodies. We can see that it didn't offset high enough to get some of these areas um, because this extended upwards too much when it um, pushed it out on the, when we thickened it. So that just means we come back into our sketch uh, down the bottom. We can just hit double click, find our offset and change that to negative three. And uh, almost, I'm just going to be a bit generous now and go negative five. Okay, so that's cleaned it up completely. Um, however, now our top one is hanging out a bit more than we'd probably want it to. Um, I mean, an easy way to fix this is to just go back in and... Um, trim it just how we did that one use another surface uh, or we could actually look at using the press pull uh, the problem is you got to go through and select all of this and it should play nice and allow us to just pull that face in a little more It's a little bit laggy because it's a complex surface. And let's see what it does as Fusion does its favorite thing, which is locking up a bit every now and then. That's almost figured it out. Okay, so it's a good thing that there's multiple ways to do this because sometimes the ways you do it can cause errors or Fusion doesn't like it. Um, so I'm just going to give this another second to see if it freaks out completely and crashes. Otherwise, I'll have to come back to you and remodel this. Um, All right, fortunately it didn't crash. Um, however, I wouldn't recommend using that tool because it came very close to crashing. Um, so yeah, we can say just because if I change this number, it's gonna uh, freeze up again for a while. So I'm just gonna say we're happy with that. And it might take a second to apply it again. So bear with me. Um, and unfortunately this is just part of the whole thing with Fusion because it's automatically trying to calculate what you might want to do how to offset a surface in 3D um, kind of regardless of the computer it might have some issues doing this quickly um, the laptop I'm using for this is quite powerful and designed for CAD 
Um, so don't be too concerned if your laptops have these little freeze up bits here and there. Uh, it is trying to do a lot of calculations on how to offset the surface properly without crashing. Um, so you just want to kind of leave it there for a second and let it do its thing. All right, so now we've got this surface. We've got the second surface that's offset very slightly. Um, and we just want to hide our sketches now. We can have a look at our head to see how it looks. Um, okay, so right now it looks like the padding on the side down here is a little bit off. So what we would, would then want to do is go back into our um, freeform, pull that in a little bit more around here um, because we want it to fit snugly on the head. I think the front has to come a bit forward. Um, the back has to come quite a bit further in. Uh, I'm not going to go through and change those just because it's going to take a bunch of time. But that's just one way we can go about it. And then again, as a helmet, I think the whole back of this should protrude a bit more. They're essentially wearing the quad wall at this point, but it doesn't matter. It's all about the processes and you're gonna have much cooler helmets that you'll be modeling up anyway. So other things we can do is start to apply uh, the holes we would see in a helmet. So little vents. Um, it's quite simple really, you just go, make sure you're in solid modeling, sketch on the top, you know, you can try and if you want to get it in the center, you can do things like uh, projecting that surface, um, drawing a line from one point to the other, now you've got an exact sort of center point to work from, if you select it all and just make sure it's construction geometry, uh, that way it won't come through when you're actually trying to model it. And we can hide our forms to actually just make our pattern on our own. Um, you might want to put a circle cut out in the middle. We can just dimension that to 30, it doesn't matter. And, um, you know, really whatever else you might want on the outside. Um, what have we got? Polygons. Um, let's do some sort of polygon thing here whatever um it's a hexagon no problem with that and we're just going to make sure that that's horizontal change the oh, wrong button we're just going to add a couple dimensions because we should be dimensioning everything at this point that we model up everything should be locked in 3d space um, and we're going to make that uh 40 and we're going to make it uh a little bit smaller at 25 so like that and uh, does it still want to move okay it still wants to move so you can just check if it's light blue that means it's not locked in place we can fix that by just selecting one point that point and telling them to be horizontal vertical so now it's vertical now we can just pattern so objects we want to pattern we got to go through and select all these lines Polygons are a bad idea. Select a center point. And now we can just go through and change the numbers on how to get that cool. Maybe because there's six of six sides, we'll do six. Why not? And we've got that nice shape. Uh, probably a bit too complicated for just a basic helmet, but whatever. Um, now it's all sitting well above, which isn't a problem. And what have we got here? All right, so our split body, we're gonna remove that in a second, um, but that's fine. And what we wanna look at doing is punching these holes all the way through. So we go to extrude, we wanna select our profiles. And we're just gonna change our extent to all. And what that means, it's gonna go through every body that it can intersect with. And we're just gonna go okay. Awesome, so now we've got our cutouts in here. Obviously they're a bit big, but not a, not a real problem. Um, to clean up our workspace, so at this point in time, we're not going to need to use that inside surface. We're not going to need to use um, the offset that was two mil, and we'll never need this bottom trim. So we can look at things where we select these objects in our panel on the side, and remove them 
And what that does is it adds in a little feature where it's just getting rid of them in the tree. If you hit delete, it's gonna screw up your timeline of where it's referencing everything. Um, so we just wanna make sure we do it that way. Um, we can go and undo this so they're not really deleted. It's, it's just a way of cleaning up our workspace because what we should be doing is renaming this as the shell and renaming this as the foam inner. So, you know, we always want to be practicing um, the best CAD practices we can as we go through. Um, so from here, you know, we can go up and neaten our thing up a bit. Uh, ideally, you'd probably put some cutouts in the front and a couple cutouts in the back, but I think you can all figure that out. It's not too big of a deal. So I want to talk about, uh, I'll show you on the outside, some of the ways we can do fillets. So fortunately, tangent chain, all this came out tangent, which is excellent. And if we go to like a 0.5 fillet, and then of course it disappears, where did it go? Um, we've got a couple options. So we've got a constant radius. And what that means is as our fillet rolls around the body, it's gonna remain at a constant radius. Uh, don't worry about the quality of the edges which is good for a surface transition um, because it keeps our radius consistent. However, for things like um, rendering lighting and getting really cool highlights in our renderings, we actually wanna go with what's called a chord length. And the way that works is instead of just setting a radius and running along the whole thing, a chord length measures the distance, um, if I can get this to zoom in nicely, a chord length measures the distance from one edge to the other and keeps that consistent. So what that means is your highlights throughout your whole model, if you use chord length fillers throughout the model, are gonna reflect light perfectly across here um, and maybe I, I think I'll put together a tutorial that demonstrates that properly because this surface isn't really a problem. This is quite a, it's a good, well-behaved surface um, for just a regular uh, constant radius. And what we could do, maybe we'll just punch this up to one. Again, the distance uh, measured is different. So we're not working with a radius. We're working with a distance between one and the other, and the other point. And we can even see if we can get away with using a instead of a tangent, which just makes sure it's tangent at that point, we can use what's called a curvature or G2 fillet. And that calculates it off an extra point where it tries to keep a consistent curvature. Um, generally, curvature fillets are better for highlights and renderings. Um, but you find that like right here, they tend to pop down a bit and end up with a tighter radius as well. So not a real problem. Um, when we're doing really good renderings and stuff, we want to keep towards that. Maybe we'll see if we can get our inside edge of this going on at a one as well. We're asking a bit much from one big fillet. Um, yep, so that's fine. And what we can actually do to stop our feature tree getting super busy, we can actually add in a new selection um, pick this, change it to tangent or whatever, and just put in like 10 mil. So our fillets can actually get uh, quite complicated, which is good and bad. So obviously the bad side is it's complicated. Um, the good side is you can organize your files really well. So generally when we're doing fillets, we wanna to get to a point where everything's modeled up, everything's awesome, and then we start to add in all of our fillets. So by doing it this way, we ensure that our, um, our fillets are going in at the end when everything's modeled up. You generally don't use fillets to create the geometry too much. You use fillets to neaten things up, round off edges. Um, or whatever that may be. So that's kind of getting into the more professional practice sort of thing, but it's good to think about as you go through. 
if you're trying to create shapes and forms by using squares and filleting them, maybe you should think about, should I have sketched this differently or constructed it differently? Okay, so something like that will work fine. Um, I'm actually just gonna go okay on that and let that load up. I'm also gonna do something that's really smart and hit the save button once this loads up because I haven't actually saved this since I started and just gonna hit save. Okay, so now our work is safe and we're not gonna lose it. Our thing's updated over here and that's all good. And you know, we probably wanna come in and fill at these. I just didn't know how these would behave. So we can easily do a constant radius on these um, because they're hexagons, they're not gonna render up or uh, fill it out incredibly nicely here. It's gonna look a bit wonky. Um, but, I mean, that's just part of it. It's no big deal. We can go through and round up these inside edges, get a nice fillet going on these as well, um, which you obviously would do on your final piece. Um, so, you know, another way around that is to just select the outside face, and if there's anything you've missed, you can type in, you know, 0.5, and that'll round out these. So it's rounding them out. If you're holding control, it allows you to select other pieces. Um, so just make sure you know that because, oops, otherwise you might not realize you can select more and you might try and create another fillet in here or something like that. Um, like I was saying, fillets are used for neatening things up. So here we can see that, um, comparing this one which just has a little fillet on here. It's not really changing the shape too much. Um, it's just making it look a bit more real. Obviously we don't get super straight cuts like that in real life. Um, and you know, if we do the matching cut, the matching fillet on the inside, um, it starts to get, like it, it, you get a really cool transition from up here to down here. Um, it's all quite sharp and you know what? I'm just gonna go through and put the rest of these in here. So we can have a really good comparison. If I can get an angle where it will let me select all of them. Gotcha. Okay, so it's starting to lag up a bit. Um, you know what, I'm gonna deselect that main body just so we can go through and put these in easier. And I'll then put them on here manually so we can compare this little area of the surface to the one of the other ones that hasn't had the fillet supplied. Obviously, you know how this is going to go. It's not going to be brand new or amazingly mind blowing. We probably want to fill up these inside bits as well, just very small, like we did with the other bit. Um, but we can see, you know, comparing one to the other. Um, where is it? Like there, coming across to rendering. Just that surface transition from one to the other is really good. Um, and we can check our surface in here as well. So all we have to do is go appearance. Um, it'll be some type of plastic or a paint. It doesn't really matter. Um, you know, maybe we'll go with a metallic flake yellow. If your fusion's being, okay, material downloading's being disabled, fusion comes up with updates a lot of the time. It can get really frustrating. What you generally have to do is just save out and open it up again. Um, that's okay, we can just use gloss. And so that is a pretty good glossy surface. The transition seemed pretty good. And let's see if our foam is downloadable or not. It'd be very annoying if it was. Okay, so we can go polystyrene. Um, it is like a type of polystyrene foam you get on these. You can double click them to open the options and play with the scale. So we just want to get in closer. Okay, so that scale looks pretty good. And do we have the option of playing with the color? Uh, no, it looks like we don't actually have the option of playing with the color on that one. Um, okay, so there's a darker one. We can apply that and polyurethane. It doesn't really matter if it is the right material or not, uh, as long as it looks right in a lot of cases. Well, that scales really harshly. Um, 
yeah, okay, maybe 50 was fine. Um, but yeah, so we can do that. We can look at getting other materials. That's really annoying. That's so close to looking right. Mm, we'll say that's good. And coming up and looking here, we can see where we've got these smoother transitions. We've got a bit of highlight up the top here as well. Um, and it starts to look really nice. Uh, I'm just going to make these... Oh, no, we can't make them unselectable in this frame. Uh, if I turn on the renderer and click off it, give it a second, and I can point out some of the elements. So, you know, this sharp edge, these sharp edges, they look pretty rough. Um, but over here, it's all quite smooth and good. I think our offset actually went the other way there. That's um, overlaying and not hasn't come up the other way. So that's like another good reason for doing a rendering because I didn't notice that in the actual modeling. Um, yeah, I've, I've flipped my thing the wrong way. So we can double check that down here. Yeah, so there should be a little gap here. Oh, that's not going to look good with the lighting. Um, but it looks like that is actually... Um, yeah, so it's overlaying the wrong way. So I made a mistake on that. Um, we come to our surface offset here and we just change it to 0.2 and that should fix that up. Um, it may take a while to fix up. So depending if this does or doesn't work, I might just actually end the video here for now. Um, what we're gonna look at next is adding in a strap. Um, or maybe we'll look at modeling the more advanced um, sport bike helmet up next. Yeah, maybe we'll do the sport bike helmet next um, because then that'll give everyone an option of going off from one or the other depending on what they're more interested in. Or of course, some of the more um, advanced shapes like a motorbike helmet or something. I'm gonna look at putting together a tutorial for that over the coming days. Um, but yeah, that is gonna be quite complicated compared to something like this. Um, like I said in my introduction video, um, a basic skate helmet probably isn't going to push your skills too hard. You will learn more by trying something more difficult. Um, and there is a lot more intricacies than it just looks like here. So really study up on a helmet and figure it out. Usually they flare out a bit here. And okay, so that looks better. Um, with our little gap, let's have a look at the top. Yeah, so we can see we've got a tiny gap between these surfaces. If I go over to render and hit it there, this should look quite decent. Would probably even then want to roll that out, that edge slightly. Um, but yeah, so it is, it might seem somewhat intimidating to, you know, model a complete helmet. But like we've seen with the basic steps that are involved, um, it's relatively easy enough to get something at this level. And so you can assume over the coming weeks, you do something like this once, you do the next level, the next level in iterations, and we're gonna start to add to it. And then it becomes a fully completed and complex product. All right, so I'm gonna leave this tutorial here. Um, thanks for watching. And yeah, the next ones will go into some more advanced features. Thanks.